please make sure to subscribe and hit this bell icon and say all and save. And that's all you need so you don't miss my pretty face. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Aquarius Navamsha video. And we're going to be discussing what happens when you have Aquarius Navamsha rising, meaning your D9 chart in Vedic astrology, which is known as the most important chart next to your main birth chart because it shows the strength of your planets. It shows the second half of life. It shows the karma that must be fulfilled through marriage or fulfilled through your spiritual dharma, spiritual uh, path that you'll walk on. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty much a secondary chart to your birth chart, you know, to confirm things. So that's what we're going to discuss today. And if you do not know what your Navamcha chart rising is, what your planets, planet replacements are, all your details, check out the links here, check out my full astrological report, including my books, astrology, conjunction aspects, and Mahadasha's the speed of light, including all my consultations at this link. So, Aquarius Navamsha. See, Aquarius Navamsha occurs when you have either earth, air, or water ascendant rising in your birth chart. So your main birth chart should have either uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn ascendant, or if you have air ascendant like Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or if you have water ascendant like Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, these can land you into Aquarius Navamsha especially depending upon the degrees of your ascendant, the second padha of your ascendant, okay, don't worry about it if you don't know, can land you into Aquarius. So what happens when Aquarius is rising? Well, first of all, when you transfer this energy from earth to air, okay, and especially from earth to the highest of air, Aquarius is the highest of air. So there's a sea level air that we are all breathing. Then there is a um, cliff air, like you're on a cliff and you're breathing air. Aquarius is the Mount Everest air, which is not too many people can deal with, not too many people want to deal with, and only a few will walk the path of that air. So this person goes from being practical, wanting to, you know, attain all the material things in life, the wealth in life to sustain themselves and their status in society to actually switching their life into having a much more meaningful purpose for collective consciousness. They're like, okay, I have all this money now. I have built my wealth, which doesn't mean anything. Because I can pretty much die right now and I'm not taking my savings with me. I'm not taking my investments with me. What I will take with me is my karmas that I take from this earth to the next life or wherever I go. So here they start focusing towards doing things for society, doing things for people at large. Whether they communicate for people, whether they fight for people, whether they want to change society, fight for animals. Those things occur with the earth to air. Air to air changes not its kark avastha, but its mission. So you could be the same Aquarius ascendant in the birth chart, Aquarius ascendant in the Navamsha, Varguttama Navamsha, which will show the exact same qualities of the person, not changing the path. From Gemini to Libra going into Aquarius. This will show that a person going from focusing on the communication for romance, relationship, friendships, and you know, uh, gossip, to actually focusing towards communication of collective consciousness. That's how you want to study this. Then if we go from water to this high air of Aquarius, well, this shows that a person tends to make Emotional connection first with themselves, then with the world. So that emotional connection is always there. And their emotions, you know, their ability to nurture, their ability to love, goes from a moment thing to a daily routine. 
for them that collective consciousness is this emotional connection for them so these are the actual transformation of the ascendant that can really produce a person who knows how to connect with people knows how to better society improve society and the violence and the suffering because a scientist may look at things mathematically okay how can we end suffering and how can we end all of these things and we gotta they'll do all their calculations and their all their mathematics where a scientist compared to a person who relates to people with their heart on the open land will not need any scientific formula will not need any scientific data for them it'll be like hey it's all about love Love is the only thing that will change society, that will bring the collective consciousness together. So that humanitarian side, you know, that really rises in the second half of life in a person's, uh, you know, life, either through marriage or just, you know, on their own, uh, becomes a lot more meaningful from going from water to, you know, air. Even with Scorpio or Pisces water, these are just very intense water. One becomes the emotional water of individuality, like mother and child. One becomes the deep, intense emotional connection with one's own undoing, with one's own shortcomings. So they can relate to people. The other one is going from a grand scale view of the world to actually putting it into practicality. With the water sign now once you have an aquarius navamsha you become the outcast within the marriage within the family you are the person that people don't hate don't think like that they don't hate they just feel like yeah he's the weird one now i don't know what happened he was a sweet loving jolly boy and now he's wearing orange clothes and he's wanting to follow some guru or some uh, teacher. I don't know. Oh my goodness, I thought you were in banking. And what? What are you doing? Alien investigation? That's awkward, weird. See, the two words that will describe this is, and it is awkward and weird. Because of the fact they are looking at life outside of what has been taught. Aquarius is the doorway to the heaven. Aquarius is the exit from this material garbage that we're dealing with in this life. So Aquarius and Pisces are two very important signs. This is where, especially if you read the mythologies of the constellations, you will understand why these two signs are extremely important for spiritual progress, occult progress, progress towards oneness with the source energy. Um, these people have tremendous amount of wealth they easily get wealth somehow some way wealth comes to them but the thing is their wealth gets divided into two places one may go to society one may go to their own personal gains or wealth will go towards the family and the other will go towards unnecessary wasteful spending either way Wealth will always be split in two different agendas throughout life. Such people have a very headstrong way of communication. They do not take garbage or BS from anybody. Because once they set their agenda on something, you can deter them. So they always like, these are the folks who always will post on Facebook about animals' rights who will always post on Facebook about what we're doing to the ozone layer, what we're doing to the, with the global warming, why eating meat is this and that. And when you comment on their thing, like, well, this is my opinion, they'll come and psh, they'll shut you down. Like, nope, you're wrong, get out of here. Within the marriage, if their communication is not the one that is being heard first, they, they try to cut it off. However, such person provides great stability within the family. Their source of love, creativity, 
comes from the family, comes from the mother, comes from having a beautiful home. Such people actually have a very, very beautiful home. Their home attracts uh, people. Like they actually love, love to have people, love to cater to people. Um, they love to have all the finest things in life. So you see how split this nakshatra is. And, and in one end, you'll see them having the most immaculate home. The next, they'll be fighting for all the poor people. It, it, it's very hard to understand. For, uh, for a common person who may not have this ascendant, they'll be like, oh, you're such a hypocrite. But for them, they're like, I have this. I'm enjoying it. But I'm also giving. Remember, my wealth is being split. I enjoy my wealth, but also I give away. So only an Aquarius will understand this notion. And when it comes to intelligence of dealing with issues of marriage, they're very quick-witted. They know exactly what to say, what to do to solve the issue within the marriage, to solve the issue within the life itself. It doesn't have to be marriage. It could be anything. It could be them dealing with, you know, a uh, mortgage company, them dealing with, you know, the gas company, them dealing with their coworkers. The intelligence is very quick witted. They know exactly what to say, when to say and how to please someone. So, you know, they, they don't become the ultimate enemy. But such people also have a very emotional connection with society. So this is where we this is where we clearly see that they always split their wealth towards betterment of society, social welfare, social reform, giving it to giving money to, you know, um, any kind of like an NGO project. Um, such people will also deal in chemicals. Their daily routines may involve dealing with chemicals, doing business of chemicals, whether it's oil, petroleum, essential oils, you know, Bach flower uh, remedies. But they, they'll, they'll be in their daily routine, always wanting to just have an emotional connection with people. If they are not having emotional connection with people, they can't sustain their own marriage life or their themselves. They must have that. And the thing is, this is why they always end up with a powerful spouse. The spouse is very powerful, whether it's a man or woman, doesn't matter. They have the backing of the spouse. The spouse stands up for them. The spouse gives them structure. The spouse shows them that you don't have to always go out towards people and give everything to people. You got to have your own individual identity. So such people actually want to be in a marriage, want to be in a relationship because they find their identity. They find their ego through the spouse. And that's the basic foundation. Now, other planets may deter this fact. Other planet may not bring that interest. Fine. We're just simply to looking at the Navamsha without planets. So you can look at anybody's plan, uh, Navamsha and just predict the basics for them. Such people find great support through their in-laws. They have the ability to get joint assets. They, they become very detail oriented on how to deal with their wills and estates, how to deal with their inheritance, how to deal with any kind of like a, you know, like the hidden wealth. And they have a very liberal view on religion, very liberal view on spirituality very liberal view on their gurus and teachers and counselors. They don't have the, that hard, you know, the hard knock way. Like, oh no, this is my religion and that's it. That's what I'm taking, just taking to. Such people may not even care for religion or spirituality. All they care for is serving people. For them, that is the enlightenment. For them, that is moksha. Is when you serve people. And just like Neem Karoli Baba said, you want moksha, you want enlightenment? Serve people and feed people. That's it. So they have that view and they are, they, they, now, now when it comes to their marriage and the reputation of their marriage, people do always feel like there's going to be friction in the marriage. They all, no matter how good the marriage is, people be like, there's some tension there. These people are just very, uh, I feel like the, my friend is in a business marriage seems like because they are they don't really interact with each other so much out in the public 
or they're whenever they're out in the public they're like very business partnership like match so they do have a um, not the best reputation about the marriage you know but it's up to the world to see how this is perceived by the plans that might be affecting you know the uh, ten uh, uh, these people's uh, Navamsha um, they will always have support from their teachers gurus counselors all the intelligent intellectuals of the world somehow come to their aid big they make connections with bankers financiers who always come out somehow come out and help them in their need and their view of the society and the world is all about having the philosophical connection and meaning to life and such people feel like it's their duty to go towards giving donations to go towards giving themselves to service to ser service to temples spiritual places you know uh, and especially whenever they travel you know whenever they have to travel within the with the spouse or with someone else it's not just a vacation it's a mission it's a mission like okay this is my karma i have to go there and do this no one can stop me and they have this strategic plan even if they go on a vacation they always follow a strategic plan and a schedule I'm going to do this here, I'm going to do this here, I'm going to do this here, I'm going to do this here. And when the spouse, let's say spouse has a different Navamsha and all that, that's where they kind of like, no, 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 no. We're going to follow mine schedule. And the spouse will be like, no, we're not going to follow any schedule. We're just going to go do things by as, it's, as, the, as, it, as is. That's where like the friction comes in. But they, they're very methodical about what they want to do when they go towards some foreign place. Okay. So guys, this was my analysis of Aquarius Navamsha. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below if you want to know where your Aquarius Navamsha is. All my books, reports, consultations. Check out the links here. Otherwise, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.